Okay, hello, it's Paul Green from the uh, business community here doing another one of our regular spotlight on interviews. Uh, this time we've got two for the price of one. So we've got Unimbox on the call today. So welcome, guys. Thank, Thank you. Paul. So it's Simon and uh, Stephanie. So we're going to give them a little bit of a grilling and find out a little bit about uh, the business, the business journey, and they're going to share some of their top tips with us later um, in this interview. So, uh, guys, do you want to just introduce yourself first? Simon, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, certainly. So I'm uh, Simon Langham, the uh, the founder, as people like to introduce me, or the uh, the MD for Unibox Limited, um, a lead generation and a generation agency. Um, that focuses on user first, um, user first websites, really, and digital marketing. Excellent. Steph. And Steph. Yes. So I am part of the well-oiled machine at Unibox. I am the marketing and content creator, and um, so I market all the user first and good things that Unibox does as a company. Okay. Thanks, Steph. So Simon, you're the head honcho. So do you want to let us a little bit, let us know a little bit about how you got to where you are today and how Unibox came to be formed? Yeah, that's a good question, because um, certainly what formed Unibox has certainly changed to what we are now, what what our why is now is very different. So I started Unibox, I, I was a developer, I was working for my parents' business, um, I needed to leave um, and set up my own business, it was a side hustle to start with. And um, I started building websites as um, many people do. And I saw a gap for good quality websites, um, understanding the code and what happens behind the websites. Um, but over the five years, the journey's really taken us into, um, you know, what is a website? And a website's a tool, and that's, that's what we do. Um, and what we're really here for is generating leads for our customers um, uh, one way or another. So we really use all of our expertise now over the years, we've found out the companies that work well, the ones that haven't worked so well, um, and we've found the commonalities and we now are a lead generation agency that focus on creating websites and marketing material to um, to generate leads for customers really, and using best practice. Yeah, I think that's what's most, most important for most small businesses, isn't it? that lead generation aspect of it. So the mm -hmm. name Unibox, how did that come about, Simon? <laughs> So, um, so I wanted a, uh, a, a, a love the one syllable word. I wanted something short and simple and easy to remember. But nowadays, everything's taken up, isn't it? Um, unless you've got a, 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 a sizable wallet to purchase a, a name that somebody's already thought of. Um, so it just came about, I, I wanted one box, but obviously that was taken, one drive and things like that, because it was a place to store things. That's originally what I was, I wasn't going to create websites. So I was going to create an application um, that was a central place for businesses to look at their water meter data and everything. Anyway, um, so one drive was taken, Latin for one is Unum. And so I went Unum box or Unum box at the time. Um, found there was a FTSE 100 company called Unum and thought, well, everybody will be able to pronounce that. That's absolutely fine. <laughs> <laughs> I went to my wife and said, Unum Box. And she said, oh, that's brilliant. That's really good. It's unique and bought the domain. It was available. Um, and um, now it's become a talking point because uh, you have to, you know, you have to spell it U-N-U-M, which is a uniform <laughs> November, uniform mother, B-O-X. It's interesting. Uh, and, and what's interesting with the name I find is in Northamptonshire, you say the name and some people look at you blank like, where, where did that come from? Yeah. Um, and then you go down to London, particularly around uh, X Cross or um, Old, is it uh, the old roundabout, Old old Street? Yeah. Um, and, and they get it. They're like, it, 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 people in the tech industry kind of get it. Uh, right. Get it cool and edgy and, and fun. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, be I believe you. Um, so, Stephanie, I've been stalking you on LinkedIn and... Mm -hmm. uh, being a geek isn't your background, is it? <laughs> so you've obviously stepped into geekdom. So what was the attraction and how are you finding it? Well, initially for me, obviously I had, um, despite coming from the hospitality sector, I had quite a lot of experience in the social media marketing side of things and the kind of event promotion side of things as well. And Cutting quite a long story short, after returning home from New Zealand in May, I vigorously um, was applying for jobs in in the you know realms of marketing because it's what I'd done before and what I knew I wanted to do when I returned home anyway. And I found Unibox. Well, I found Simon and Becky first. Becky is our content creator as well, um, and. 
I haven't looked back since, to be honest. Um, it's been amazing. I think I, you know, I am on my journey in Unibox have already learned so much about what marketing entails. Um, and especially working for Unibox, a company that not only is with the time, but also very ahead of the curve. It's it's pushed me out of, out of my depths in a really good way. Um, and I love it. So yeah. good. Good, good, good. So um, I've noticed, I think, on social media, you've shared that you've had a recent growth spurt or certainly over the last month. I think you've doubled in size. So it's in the current climate, you know, that's a pretty impressive thing i guess for most companies to do so what what's what's brought that about you know what's led to uh, to the success and you growing that quickly so fast well, i've got to link it to the last question because uh, the reason steph got the job was the enthusiasm that she brings and, okay. I, and 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 actually it's the same reason why i think we're doing well is um the enthusiasm um and drive it was interesting a week before lockdown um or the, at the beginning of the year was actually a tough time um particularly around brexit and the uncertainty it was kind of well, where do we go? What are we doing? And then Brexit, uh, sorry, then COVID seemed to happen. And it was a week before the lockdown and rumours were being said. And I sat down and went, well, I've got to write a plan because it's either this or give up. <laughs> but I'm not yeah. one to give up. Um, yeah. And that plan was probably the, I don't know, it, it was a defining moment. Um, and we stuck to it. We we made sure that we focused on marketing. So Steph was the first person to join marketing, focus on that. Um, we put out positivity. Uh, we seeked opportunity when many of our competitors were actually putting on people on furlough. We were we were taking on. Um, we we realised that actually now's the time not to cheapen ourselves, but to actually um, add value. People are coming to us for guidance in a digital first world, which is where we're very comfortable. Um, so we, we're we're completely remote now. We don't have an office at all. Uh, we're fully embracing that. Um, we're able to employ staff from around the UK um, because Northamptonshire is unfortunately not a great place to employ developers. Um, so we're able to get the best um, skills. So really COVID has, has helped us because uh, I, got, I could talk about this for hours, <laughs> but simplifying it down, you know, um, we don't have to spend a whole day going out to meetings. We can, we can go on yeah. Zoom. So we're far more efficient. Uh, we're able to source the best resources around the country. Uh, we have the energy enthusiasm to take on the projects. We now have the team to take on the projects as well um, and diversify out and, and use expertise across the board. So I'm not doing everything. We've got a, a UX designer, we've a UX UI designer. Um, we've got a marketing special spe specialist, that's the word, um, <laughs> content creator, SEO writer, um, plenty of developers. We've, we're developer heavy. Um, so, so that puts us in good stead. I think that's really led to to everything and really understanding where we are and having a purpose and finding a solution to all the problems that seem to be happening at the moment are great. I realise I'm I'm just <laughs> running off, but I think that kind of <laughs> um, it's, it's, no, to... I mean, it's, it's useful to know because you know no one expected us to be in this situation. I think for as long as we have been, um, mm -hmm. I think, you know, I've been quite impressed with the creativity and the way that small businesses have adapted um, mm. and you know taking advantage of the online stuff you know because i know there were people pre-covid that thought oh, we had to be in an office we had to you know we had to have staff under one roof etc 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 well now mm. everybody's been forced into this remote working um, mm. you know i'm sure there's opportunities that, it, that it's opened up for for uh, everybody so no that that was that was really useful to understand mm. your journey so getting mm. a bit geeky for a minute um, so you guys sort of specialised in in AMP websites, AMP websites. For the, so for the non-geeky amongst us that might be uh, tuning into this, do you want to say a little bit about what that is and what that means to you know your de your development? Yeah, I'll um, I'll pick up on that and might pass over to Steph in a second because what I've always found is there's so many websites. Every business has a website. Um, and uh, when you're searching on Google, you, you have to appear higher than the others. So it's fantastic when companies use Wix, Weebly, WordPress websites because it makes it easy for us to rank above them um, because there's limitations to the systems. Um, but we had to go out and say, well, how do we, how do we ensure that we get to the top? Well, we can't. There's no guarantees. Um, Google are in, uh, uh, have the keys to that car. Uh, we, we don't. But what we can do is do everything that they expect. So 
super fast websites, loading speed is so important and, and, and on mobiles in particular and performance, something that people miss out. It's not the speed that the website loads, but it's the performance on some of these phones. If you have parallax graphics or um, some videos, your, your phone, certainly um, slower phones will struggle. So Google created AMP, which is Accelerated Mobile Pages. And it's a technology that focuses on user first technology to provide super fast websites. So we embrace that um, over a year ago now, and it's been our silver bullet. If you take a website that um, has a good domain authority and has a good number of visitors to it, now you upgrade it to AMP, uh, you can pretty much guarantee you'll see a 20% increase in conversion rates just by switching to AMP. Um, it doesn't necessarily work, we've found over time for new websites, you, you, domain authority is still king, link back, link building, and all those traditional SEO um, things you still need to focus on those um, but if you take an existing website and upgrade it to AMP um, then then you'll see success and it makes you appear in different places and probably just adding to AMP is other technologies that I could bore you to death with PWA progressive web apps um, SVGs for um, illustrations we really understand and and enforce that we're using the latest technology things that people haven't heard of web stories for example are a new thing nobody's heard of them um, they will next year and we're ahead of it. Um, we're ahead of all the technologies, particularly the ones that Google put out, because Google dominate the internet, whether you like them or not. <laughs> they dominate search. And we're there. We're ready. We understand it. It's uh, it's not strange to us. I don't know if Steph wants to add anything more to that. <laughs> so, Steph, you're out there, um, you know, as the marketing queen for a union box. And I know you sort of like network quite prolifically. So I guess having a USP like um, AMP, you know, help distinguish yourself from other website uh, developers. Um, do, in terms of your market, are there any sort of like ideal clients that you're looking for? Any sectors or any size of company or any ones that you've been more successful with than others? Well, I think now that things are kind of hopefully coming out of COVID, you know, we had a business realignment during lockdown one, as Simon kind of touched on with his plan is to kind of realign the business to help those smaller businesses who had either faced, you know, people who had either faced redundancy or, um, you know, on furlough, had the spare time to start something new. So we kind of realigned Unibox as a business to help out those those smaller businesses um, at that time. So, you know, with offering one page referral websites up to, you know, e-commerce multi-page websites, which actually proved really successful during lockdown one and throughout the summer as well. But I think now we are obviously focusing more so on those larger sized contracts, enterprise level projects because of this technology that, you know, that we have and that, you know, we have access to. We, I think we, we do want those bigger contracts. We're obviously trying to tap in as well. Well, I say trying, we already have tapped into the States and to the Australian market as well, but obviously that's going to be a big push for us for 2021 mm -hmm. as well. Um, but yeah, just, I mean, any, Simon, I don't know whether you want to take over on this one. <laughs> no, you, 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 no, you got that pretty much right. We're, we're, we're particularly out for those that uh, are thinking digital first and want to grow their businesses and taking it, taking it seriously. I think that's, uh, that's where we can help them. Yeah, I, th I think you're the first international uh, uh, company that I've had on this. Uh, <laughs> so thank you for, for breaking that. <laughs> um, so, uh, Back to Steph, do you want to say a little bit about the webinars that you guys are, are running? I, th I think they're free to attend, aren't they? Yes, yes. So our webinars are free to attend. So the kind of format of them is obviously um, the platform is called Wow Webinars. And there is a Facebook group as well that obviously most people within the business community are probably aware of by now. <laughs> um, but essentially, it is a, it, it's a platform to be able to aid businesses with their digital marketing needs. So we are kind of as we're going into the realms of being a lead generation agency we're focusing on things in the new year such as how to accelerate your leads um within your digital marketing um we've also got our, our up next upcoming webinar in january is um january the 11th i believe um is how to climb google's search results using amp as well obviously what we've just been discussing um, but all details are obviously always on our Facebook pages. We also have a webinar page on our website, which is also being launched in the next few, well, couple of weeks, really. 
to be honest, isn't it, Simon? <laughs> it is now, apparently, yeah. We're, we're yeah. Definitely, we are now holding a Zoom, um, sorry, a, a webinar on January 11th, and uh, our, um, our webinar paper will be live in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think the good thing as well about our, our webinars is obviously with, with there being a Facebook group, we, we obviously base it on, we run polls on that Facebook group, and we base it on what we think people may need some help with. Um, but it's we can also tailor these webinars to, to you know, if, if someone wants help with something specifically, we can help them with that as well. And then the, kind of the format with those is that we run one live webinar monthly and then throughout the following month, we show pre-recorded versions of that webinar. Albeit it's not live, we still um, allow for you to have an option to ask questions that we can get back to you with answers for as well. So, um, but yeah, it's um, all free and all good cool so um simon you've got quite a young family i believe mm -hmm. so um you know often talk about sort of work-life balance and, and stuff like that uh, apparently this is a question that you're not meant to ask women because women get offended so i'm going to ask a man so how, how, how do you cope running a business which is a you know a big enough task in itself with also having a young family and you know keeping keeping uh, that balance yeah so kate joined us um arrived in Gosh, I almost forgot the date then, July. <laughs> um, and um, uh, yeah, I, I have a fantastic wife who's uh, on maternity leave, and uh, you know, it's it's ensuring who who takes which responsibility. Really, she's the, she's taken uh, maternity leave, and she um, uh, she looks after Kate, um, and I look after the business, and and every spare time I. I get. I spend time with family. Lockdowns made it easier. Um, we don't have to go anywhere. We don't have to meet people. So I get to spend a lot of time with with them. My spare time. The minute I leave this room, um, I'm down with my family, which is great. Um, and yeah, I, I recognise that the business provides for the family. So I, I can't. Um, I have to focus on on the business, um, and it's helped me focus my mind a lot. And having a bigger team now, so uh, we're twelve now. It's easier or we're transitioning i'm still uh, doing some of the work but from january i won't be um it would be managing it which makes it a lot easier to to manage that work-life balance i think excellent. um yeah excellent yeah because i don't, don't want to miss the growing up of kate do you no nope. <laughs> uh, so um i often ask people i don't know if you're familiar with simon Sinex book start with why um uh, it's essentially sort of uh that driving force i guess that emotional connection that you have with the business that mm -hmm. you get out of bed each morning and uh you know strive to do what you what you do so what would you say your why is simon um my personal why um mm. is 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 making a difference i i admire people like looking at the bigger picture i, I admire people like uh, elon musk for example who have this grand massive vision and they're just working on it despite many failures they just keep at it um and 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 that kind of keeps me going that uh, yeah it's it's the bigger picture and um i love mondays i love getting on with things um i love uh, making a difference i like um um I, and i think linking it then to the business why um we're there to um to move the internet forward and and generate leads and use it for what it's for um which um steph will pick up a bit later on but is is answering people's questions and being there as a solutions provider um, um and and fixing things um answering questions um providing solutions um that's the business why um, and that generates leads looks at, look after the users and the users will look after your customer yeah elon musk is quite a character i think his latest rocket uh, crash landed and I think you described it as an unscheduled disassembly. <laughs> Did you, and also one of the rockets fell over in the in the hangar as well. <laughs> <laughs> Good job they weren't stacked up like dominoes or anything like that. Um, so, Steph, what's your why? What gets you out of uh, uh, bed each morning to sort of uh, wave the Unibox flag? Um, I think it makes my job a whole lot easier to be marketing a business that, like I said earlier, is so ahead of the curve it it you know not only that but i also enjoy what i do i love people i love like i, I just love people i think it's probably come across by now within business community events i just love to talk and you know and i love to share i think the main thing for me is that obviously a big ethos that lays around Unibox as a business is positivity right from the start simon has always 
you know, I think that's why why Simon and myself get on so well is because we're both very enthusiastic and positive people and working for a business and not only doing a job that I really, really enjoy, but actually having that entire attitude around it as well just makes it so easy. Not so easy. Obviously, there are challenges in my day to day. Well, your, your KPIs are being increased now. <laughs> <laughs> tough crowd, Steph. It's a tough crowd. <laughs> But, you know, I don't, I really hand on heart, don't ever find myself waking up and thinking, oh, even if it's a tired morning, you know, it's one of those mornings where there's a little bit of a barrier in front of you. I never wake up and not look forward to going to work. And that sounds so cliche, but it's so true. <laughs> and can Simon rap as well as you? No. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I consider you, you appreciate that rap is uh, uh, means reciting a poem. Um, so I can recite a poem, but I can't rap. Yeah, just for the context of any listeners, one of the introductions that Steph did at a networking meeting, she did in rap. Um, I think there was a, at another network, there was a competition, wasn't there, to sort of see who was the best, who could rap the best intro or something. Yeah. And then yeah. I put on the spot at my meeting and got her to do it again. So. Uh, and then I, um, also continued to come up because obviously that was at the freebie one on Fridays and then it yeah. continued to come around at a couple of other Buzzcom events during the week. Yeah, I think you got a reputation for that that particular time. Yeah, um, I did get quite a lot of acknowledgements for that, Raph. I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, after you'd done that and I said everybody else had to do it in rap, I think people got quite quite afraid. Um, <laughs> So um, obviously, obviously, as we're recording this, uh, we're, we're still in the pandemic and hopefully just coming out of lockdown 2.0, as some people call it. Um, hopefully there won't be a 3.0 or any subsequent ones, but we'll have to wait and see. So out, outside of that, Simon, what's been the biggest challenge that Union Box has faced over the last five or six years since you've been in business? Oh, gosh, so many. Um, I love a good challenge, though. Um, Actually, it's uh, um, going back to Elon Musk, actually, as well. Um, I, I, I think he's faced a lot of challenges, um, you know, rockets blowing up on the launch pad <laughs> but you, um, or, or the landing pad. But you learn so much from them. And I, I would say the challenge has been making, making mistakes. You have to make mistakes to learn from them, but not making so many that you, you, you become detrimental to your own success. So you have to, the challenge is actually, looking back at your own activities and evaluating what lessons you can learn from that, um, making sure that things aren't repeated. Um, mm -hmm. I think that they're the worst mistakes. If you can, if you consistently make the same mistake, um, then there's a problem. <laughs> you have yeah. to learn from the mistakes. So the challenge is making, making enough mistakes, but not, <laughs> not making them detrimentally to your customer um, or lessening the impact <laughs> if, if, if that is the case. Um, and yeah, that, that's uh, yeah, that's the challenge. Is yes, yeah, balancing act. Yeah, it's different mistakes are fine. The same one over and over again is a bit a bit silly, really, isn't it? Yeah, give up. So, <laughs> Do something so, else. Uh, <laughs> Step Simon's obviously a fan of uh, Elon Musk. Is, is there anybody out there that you sort of aspire to, or you look at in the business world to motivate you? Um, I, th I would say that. If you, if you say Simon, your KPIs will come down. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> why, is this so, why do I feel like this is such a tricky question to ask? <laughs> I, to be honest, in, in what you just said, I mean, Simon is actually someone to look up to in, not in like a, I'm not, you know, being a, being a sucker it, right now. But. Your KPIs are coming down, it's fine. <laughs> I told you, Steph. See, not bad, not that bad a crowd after all. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think that um, again, it's going back to this this idea of positivity. I think any business owner who is able to maintain positivity every morning, Simon comes onto calls and he's positive, mostly. <laughs> I'm joking. He is. But I think any business owner that is able to maintain that as well as working incredibly hard to build successes for themselves and for their business, I think that's admirable. So I would say Simon is an example of that. But at the moment, off the top of my head, I can't think of anyone else who is an example of that. But as a general, that is probably 
I've I've realised I'm I'm buying you some uh, books for Christmas on some people to admire. <laughs> well, no, I, I, they, they in the last month or so they they published a list of the hundred most um, uh, uh, I can't remember the exact word. It's the most is um, women women that the top hundred women that have achieved the most or to aspire towards or stuff like that. And embarrassingly, I looked through the list and knew about two of the women listed there. And I felt quite ashamed at that almost that, you know, in my world, obviously I wasn't looking out for these um, aspiring women. And I, if, if in fairness, they've done a top list of a hundred men, I might not recognize many of them because I'm not a big follower of the news, but um, yeah, it was, it was just an interesting sort of reading really just sort of see all these uh, women in this particular case, you know, and all the things they were doing and they were considered to be, you know, these top, top hundred achievers or contributors or whatever the, the, the word was. So, um, what about your biggest challenge, Stephanie? Because I think you came into the business during COVID time, didn't you? So this is almost the norm to you. Yeah, I mean, I think every, I mean, the team at Unibox know that I, um, like quite a lot of people know about me, is that I, I really am such a social person. So I think what I didn't actually really think about at the time of, you know, entering Unibox was the fact that, I've always been used to such a social environment and being around people basically 24 seven and going from, from that to remote working, um, I thought could have been a challenge for me because, you know, you're sat at home and, or, you know, albeit I live with my sister and, you know, it's, it's more so you're sat by yourself, but actually being a digital first company and making it so easy to, to remote work and actually so easy to communicate still, I thought that that would be a challenge, um, but I don't actually really think that it is um, because, you know, we're, we as a team still ensure that we communicate regularly, that we have virtual coffee breaks together, that, you know, everything that you would usually do in an office environment, albeit I've actually never worked in an office, so I'm going off an assumption there, um is is actually still happening even in this remote environment and i think yeah i think that probably would have been a challenge but i don't think that it is for me now. i'd love to add to that actually on uh because i think it adds value to what we're doing at the moment we've learned so many things with remote working is a realization is with lockdown you've had to evaluate yourself like i've realized i am so an introvert i i can stay at home and, and not socialize um but there are other people that absolutely need to socialize um and so you have to um as a as a company uh replace all of those usual things so we we do things such as socials once every month um i buy I buy the company buys um, takeaway vouchers. Um, we all meet up on Zoom, and we have the, we have that social aspect there. We have the coffee mornings. We have team meetings once a week. We have stand ups every morning. Um, I, I reckon actually we communicate more now remotely than we probably did when we were in an office. Um, so, um, so that's really important, and I think that's a challenge that most people, particularly if you're an employer, think of your staff um, of of the challenge. That, that that's probably the biggest challenge. I think you've represented there is the biggest challenge that most um, employees are considering at the moment. And as an employer, mm. you have to switch things around very quickly, but it yeah. does work, works amazingly. I, I love the idea of takeaway vouchers. I've not thought about that before. That's a great way of, uh, you know, getting people to come on board. The, the, yeah. uh, one, of the one of the detrimental things that I've heard about uh, people sort of like stating, I don't have the stats to hand in terms of people working remotely as, as opposed to under one roof, is you lose that creativity. Now, I guess you could argue that you guys are in a, in a creative world. Do, do you think that's the case? Has that, has that hampered your creativity as a business? No, it's it's an easy one to mitigate. The, 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 um, it provides opportunities all of a sudden you have efficiency and time to put lots of ideas you just have to work it differently if you if you if you stick with the same model where you all sit around a room and you and you quickly jot things down you can't do that but you can um go away and everybody create all their ideas independently then you can have a meeting where you put it all together you can discuss those and go away then and, and work on them independently and come back everything we do is digital as well we don't we don't deal with physical um print material so that makes it slightly easier because we are viewing or previewing things as they will be seen by the user in the end anyway. Um, so I can, I can understand a print company would find it difficult. Um, uh -huh. But no, I think um, in the digital world, in a digital first world, it's much easier. So cool. much easier. 
Okay, thank you. So, uh, Steph, we're going to put an even bigger spotlight on you. You've agreed to sort of like share some uh, uh, top tips from as part of the Union Box team. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you on full screen. Me and Simon will be in the background, being very quiet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, the floor is yours, Steph. Amazing. Oh, I didn't put my timer on, Paul. Bear with me. That's okay. Because, you know, cool. So, one, so obviously with some top tips from us at Unibox, but the main crux of it all is that the key bit of advice that we want to talk to you about is ensuring that you're the type of business that adopts a user first attitude. Obviously, this is something that we have previously spoken about in this interview already. And just from our experience, it's usually the case that there's two types of companies. The first company we like to refer to as actually me first companies. Um, or essentially the type of company that's prone to thinking about themselves and wants to spend the majority of their time projecting themselves. We hear it quite a lot from these type of companies, the words, for example, I want us to look, I want us to look like, and they'll genuinely focus on the appearance such as, oh, can you make our logo bigger for us, for example. However, the second type of company is our example of a user first business. This type of company, instead of thinking about themselves, will actually channel their focus more into wanting to answer the questions of their prospects and customers. So from these types of companies, instead of hearing words such as, I want us to look like, we're hearing something more along the lines of, oh, I have a solution for them. So it's a user first company that will tend to go beyond settling for the success of a Facebook page, for example, and the recommendations from their mates. They're actually more likely to push the boundaries further and create a website, for example, full of a catalog that, that entails a catalog full of questions and answers to their customers. Essentially, a user first company will get to the crux of things, helping to provide solutions to their future customers as quickly and efficiently as possible. Quite simply, they are answering the questions that their customers are asking. It's as simple as that. But not only this, they'll also commit to answering the questions that businesses might not necessarily want to answer in the first place. For example, how much is it? How much is your product? For some businesses, this question isn't easy to answer off the cusp of things, mainly due to some projects or products just being far too bespoke, um, depending on the customer. But however, again, these are the answers your prospects want and need. And if you don't answer these, you can be damn sure that your competitors will be. And essentially this results in custom being taken elsewhere, which is obviously what we don't want <laughs> as businesses. So following on from this, Another scenario we might see from me first companies, for example, um, is that these type of companies have a tendency to market themselves with a kind of sheen of only pros to their business over them. This isn't relatable nor realistic. In fact, it can be even detrimental to those customers approaching your business altogether because they want to come to a business that's relatable. But a user first company knows that actually being truthful and honest will make them more relatable and approachable as a business. So the crux of all of this is that a user first business will see success from adopting and maintaining a user first approach. One where they listen and establish the art of finding solutions as opposed to only ever shouting about themselves. But a point I want to make here is that to remember that for most, a me first business is a simple and very easy trap to fall into. Because many businesses, when starting out in the digital world, whether it be the development of a website or they're thinking about their marketing, for example, of course, they're going to think it's necessary to think about just them and their business because that's what they're striving to promote. So this is an easy trap to fall into. It's not a bad reflection on a business. It's just it's an easy thing to, to do. So this is just a little gentle reminder to say to not fall at that first hurdle and to give you a gentle nudge towards this user first approach. Because once you've established this user first approach, you can then be sure for a better chance of climbing Google's ranks, as well as having good quality content to share on social media, which will therefore generate more leads and conversions for your business. And this is something that as a lead generation agency at Unibox, we can also help you with as well. So yeah, that's a little bit of advice from Unibox. Okay, great advice, Steph. Thanks for that. And I think it's absolutely right. There's a tendency, and I've done it before, you know, to focus on internally rather than externally, you know, and generally every piece of marketing should speak to the, to the audience, 
not to, uh, you know, I, I love the About Us page, one of my bugbears, you know, it's sort of like I this and we this and et cetera, et cetera. No pictures of the staff, you know, which I know on your site you have pictures of your staff that, you know, people buy people, don't they? So they're, they're engaging with human beings. So anyway, mm -hmm. uh, I'll stop ranting because it's your uh, spotlight. Um, so um, <laughs> you, uh, final thing from uh, each of you, we might get two tips for the price of one site. So uh, always ask people uh, that are guests on this uh, broadcast, you know, what's, what's one top tip that you would give for business? So Simon, what's one top tip you'd give to any uh, business owner out there? I was gonna, I was gonna say something else, but I, I think absolutely yeah. imperative is uh, opportunity. Every problem has an opportunity. Um, there's there's oodles of opportunity. Um, if you are a person that struggles to find solutions or opportunity, then talk to someone that can, um, because um, whatever the problem, um, COVID, Brexit, um, Trump, whatever it is, there's opportunities there, and you just need to to find those opportunities and, and work towards them. So keeping a positive outlook, really, isn't it, and just sort of seeing mm -hmm. what uh, what's uh, in in can't think of an expression wood amongst the trees or trees amongst the wood whatever um yeah. stephanie do you have a top tip for any business owner out there yeah i would say for me communication make sure that you communicate as you know from a business owner to your team as well as team member to team member as well um, and this includes the negatives as well um often a situation can be resolved a whole lot quicker if either the business owner or you know your work colleague you know, just communicates with each other. And, um, you know, I'm sure many people find in, in life in general, not just in the business world, that most disagreements are based on misunderstandings. So I definitely would say that communication is, is key. And I think if us as a digital first company and being remote working can master this, I think everyone can, to be honest. Okay, thanks, guys. Uh, your deal is over. You'll probably be happy to uh, happy to know. So I'm going to end the broadcast right there. And just thanks for uh, both of you giving up time. I've used 36 minutes times two of Unibox, Unibox's valuable time. So I appreciate you uh, you doing that. So thanks very much. It's more than a pleasure. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. Thank you for having us. <laughs>